uh, back to our our normal programming for now. The Gear of Rivia video was a lot of fun and it was a long time to edit and film. So this week we're going back to one of our normal character runs. A simple one requested a lot by one of the biggest fans out here on this channel. So thank you so much. You know who you are. This is going to be Can You Beat Fault New Vegas as Tony Montana. Our video starts as they always do in Doc Mitchell's office. I want this audio recording to be a bit more free talking, a bit more just me riffing as I play. The character's name is obviously Tony Montana. I tried to make him as, as close as I could, but my god, the character creation kit is not brilliant in Fountain of Vegas. I take barter, guns and medicine, Logan's loophole and skilled. I don't normally take Logan's loophole, but I'm not planning to go past level 30 like in the previous video. And I'll be using as much chems as possible in, in respect to the Scarface man. Game for the beginning of the game and I'm already just going to head over to the Powder Gangers. I mean, they're a gang. They have powder in their name. It makes sense. And when I'm taking out all the people who helped me after I got shot in the head, I want to briefly go over what I'm going to be doing in this video. So, I'll only be using the weapons that I could find in the Scarface Wikipedia. Um, mostly involves some shotguns, assault rifles, and a 9mm pistol. Um, I'll only be able to wear a suit for uh, old Tony Montana, but I will be able to use some casual wear as well. You know, something that you kind of see him wear in the movie. I also have to make sure I'm using as many chems as I can in most of the fights. And for the final fight, I've got to use as much as I possibly can in the one big go. With all kind of the rules and parameters set, I finish off Doc Mitchell, winning Good Springs for the Powder Gangers, and heading off to the cemetery, back to the old scene of the crime. I pick up the cigarette butts for later, and start making my way towards Prim. I find some old pre-war outfits. It's not going to help me with DT, but I feel like, yeah, he, he would have wore something like this when he went to America, right? I'm not crazy. Now, although I'm friends with the Powder Gangers, no matter what you do, the convicts in Prim will never be friendly. So I head in and start taking them out, and I've, so far I've only really picked up the 9mm... So far, I've only picked up the 9mm pistol, and that is more that is more than enough to take out the, the low-level convicts at this point. Instead of instilling the only true sheriff, old Prim Slim, I decide I'll go to the NCR Correctional Facility to pick up Myers to be the sheriff. It's something I never really get to do, so a, a different way of completing it. While I'm here, it's, uh, it's not a bad idea to recruit a new gang to help me out with uh, this area of the map. So I speak to Eddie, who gives me a hit. A hit to take out on a guy called Chavez. And this feels very fitting, I'm not gonna lie, it does feel very fitting, a very fitting quest. So as soon as I get to Chavez, I, uh, I unload. With him out of the way, I'm also headed over to take out a bounty hunter that's looking for the Powder Gangers. And it's funny the animations in this game because before the guy can even stand up off of the, the leaning house, I'm already able to take him out. Despite assisting the Powder Gangers at this point, I do head over to the Mojave Outpost to speak to Major Knight to get Myers instilled as a Sheriff of Prim. A nice little simple bribe, you know, bribe the government a little bit, you know. <laughs> Help me get my papers in order, head over to Ranger Jackson and decide to tell the ants for him. And that's because he's going to give me my next weapon for this playthrough. With all that out of the way, I head back to speak to Myers and let him know that he is a new Sheriff of Prim. Although I've helped the NCR, I am not going to be helping him for much longer. And I head back to Eddie and he wants me to figure out if there's going to be an attack on the prison soon. So I head over to Johnson Nash and he lets me know that the NCR are planning some sort of assault. And once I've let Eddie know, we all get into attack position. I do think it's a little bit ironic. I just got the server rifle from the NCR. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is testing it out on the NCR. Although I felt pretty confident at the start of this fight, I completely forgot that the NCR come from both sides. And I get wiped out from an attack from the rear. Rethinking the battle, I decided to take a bit more of a cautious approach. Try and get behind some cover and finish off the NCR pretty fast. If you're looking to use a service rifle for most of this playthrough, this is a great place to pick up ammo really early doors. As you can see, I've already got about 300. On my way to Nipton, I decided to have a quick little nap to reheal myself, and Malcolm Holmes just 
I mean, talk about close. My character looked up and then spun around as he entered me. And uh, apologies, Malcolm, but that is that is a big no-no for me. I'm so used to just hitting Oliver Swank with a melee weapon, I forgot he could even talk to you. And with this transgression, I decide, let me do a bit of sniper practice. And, uh, I mean, it never gets old. I head over and speak to Volpez, who lets me know about all the naughty things he's been doing. He's a, he's a naughty, naughty boy. And instead of traipsing all the way around the mountain, I decide to go through the Prim Pass. I mean, it's re-watching this back that I realised if I wasn't going to turn in the Nipton quest, there was really no reason I had to go for Nipton. I should have just jumped up for the Prim Pass earlier. But I get past the Deathclaw and decide to attack some more Vipers. And, I mean, I have never been bombarded this much by the Viper Gunslingers just outside the Prim Pass. I mean, I know they usually have grenade rifles, but I am being bombarded as if I am trying to take the beach at Normandy here. I mean, at this point, I think I've been able to take them up with a machete before. I mean, all of them, but for some reason this time, they are... God, they, they are like a military unit waiting for me. But with that, I enter Novak, because I'm going to pick up my next weapon of this playthrough. Looking through the Wikipedia, it says that Double Barrel Shotgun is seen in Scarface. Now, I don't remember seeing Tony Montana with one, but it's in the movie, so... What a better opportunity to use a special weapon that I've never used. I tried buying it, I tried pickpocketing it, you can't take it off of her at this stage. So, there's only one thing to do, and that is to open fire on her and all of her little pet wolf whiffs. I don't like, I don't like taking out the dogs, but I mean, they attacked me. They attacked me first, I promise. I mean, I mean, they're coming right for us, that's, that's what I was saying. But with old Lady Gibson's little shop wiped out, I get my hands on Big Boomer. Now, Big Boomer is a special double barrel shotgun, which I have never used before in any playthrough. I mean, it's just, I've never felt the need to take out old Lady Gibson. But, um, I know that this is the only special double barrel. So I thought, when am I ever going to get another chance to use this? Maybe in a different playthrough, but for now, I wanted to use it. You can see uh, the very distinct features of it. It says Big Boomer. I mean, I assume that's where it gets its name. If it isn't, it's a hell of a coincidence. But with my new power, I'm going to head straight over to Boulder City. It's here where I'm faced by the NCR Rangers. Who, yeah, if you do any kind of anti-NCR playthrough, they usually turn up to try and give you a bit of a squeaky bum. Try and threaten you a little bit. And I thought, what's the most Tony Montana thing to do? I'm going to threaten them back and say, let's settle this now. But as I say, let's settle this now. They don't do dick. I don't know if this is a bug, if this is something in their coding. Maybe I wasn't disliked enough by the NCR for them to become hostile, but even though I instigated it, they didn't shoot first. But despite that, I still end up dying. Take a bit of a different route this time from Novak, and I head over to the Eldrado gas station. Yeah, not the substation. That comes later, my boy. And it's here's where I'm faced by the NCR Rangers again. And one of them's even got a veteran ranger helmet, which I thought this level seemed a bit, a bit high for them. But with that, they don't instigate the fight again, so I decide I'm going to take them out one by one. And even as I'm wiping them out, they, none of them turn hostile. I fe it feels like if you're able to take them out in one shot, the other ones don't turn aggro. It almost doesn't even register that you've done anything. So I thought, well, this would be a nice way to take them out without ruining my rep. But yeah, the Veteran Ranger helmet does does its work and it does not allow it don't even do much damage at all. So I had to start aiming for the body. Which shows just how strong that armor is and God I'd love to do an NCR Ranger playthrough. And with him taking a lot of damage, luckily the Cazadors come over to uh, to give me a bit of an assistance, but it's not too long before they set their sights on me. After the Geralt Rivia video, I have had my fill of Cazadors, so when I arrive at Boulder City, I am surprised to see that Lieutenant Monroe, not only on fire, but still not hostile despite my very poor NCR rep. Now despite what you guys might think of the great Canton Tony Montana's potential relationship, at this point, these are the people that set up the hit on me. So despite what faction they're part of, they gotta go. And with that, I'd mark Hoover Dam, and head over to the 188 training post to see if I can pick up another weapon. And I luckily do. The Assault Carbine. Because at the end of the video, 
at the end of the movie, say hello to my little friend. But if I got my new suit on, it's time to take a nice little panoramic show of me. I mean, I got my big boomer and I got my little friend. My little friend. Maybe I should quit YouTube and become a voice actor. I think I'm pretty good at impressions. With my new weapons in hand and wearing my nice new bright suit, I head straight up to Cap McCarran. And, well, I, there's only one way I felt like I could really enter the strip. And that is by illegally hopping through the door onto the monorail. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what happened in the movie. I'm, I'm pretty sure he got through the border, not not by a proper means. And I felt like I would do the same, finally enter Vegas and ready for getting my revenge. I head straight over to Lucky 38 and speak to Swank. And with the lighter, with my speech, and with the distinctive cigarette butts, it's no problem getting Benny up to his room. Again, I forgot, at this point I usually have a melee weapon that cuts his dialogue, but big boomer in hand, I'm just going to let him know that there's no getting out of this one. He's not going to be able to talk himself out of this. He took out a hit, the hit failed, and Benny goes down for it. With that, I decided to go speak to one of the other crime families in the town, Mr. House, and see what his offer is. His offer was crap. It was complete crap. And no time to waste. I am opening up his chamber and I'm going to show Mr. House that there's only one real mob boss in town. Making my way downtown, walking fast, faces past, and I'm homebound. With my new 9mm pistol in hand, there's only one thing for Mr. House, and that is to get out of the picture. I'm going to speak to someone who's on my turf and decide to go help out the Garrett twins. As their quests seem very Tony Montana, you know? Gotta get my reputation up in the city, gotta make myself a feared man. And what is, what would make a man so intimidating than bringing Fisto to life? Acting as a debt collector, I go over to speak to Lady Jane, and luckily my perception's high enough that I don't have to do any nonsense and block for our claim. Heading over, I actually didn't even notice that Santiago ran away there. I actually get really confused. I'm like, he's supposed to be here. Have I have I not activated the quest properly? I have to pull out Vats to see where he went. I mean, I I must have been watching something on my phone when that happened when I was playing. Because I the recording, it's so obvious that he ran away. I just didn't see it. Despite punching me in the face and taking his money, he's more than happy to come work for the same people that just took his money. And after him, I head over to Beatrix Russell and finish off picking up all the different escorts well except the main boy grex is last to pick up the bounty head over to fisto and as i usually partake in his services i don't think tony montana would so i'm sorry fisto this time i'm gonna have to pass with that turned in i go over to see killer McCafferty, which this is you know debt collector turned hitman he goes down pretty quick and i go speak to francine and hand over his hat Finishing the quests for the Garrett twins, getting my reputation up, and setting myself as one of the big men on town. With all that done though, I decided to head over and get Yes Man installed. Because when looking at all the different factions that he could side with, Yes Man felt like the only appropriate one. You know, taking over the whole Vegas, taking over the whole Mojave is an independent man, you know. And with that, I go over to Gamora. Now my initial thoughts were to get Kachino instilled, but I thought Tony Montana wouldn't put a rat, wouldn't put a rat at the head of one of the gangs. So when I go over to speak to Big Cell, so far so good. Big Cell is, you know, want to take out the rat, but he doesn't seem to be able to sit down and move this quest along. Come on, Sal. Sit down, Sal. I'm having a head over and give Sal a little nudge off to the right. He's finally able to break this strange pathing and sit down in his chair. The button man does what you need to do to rats and Kachino is no more. Getting me on the good side of Big Sal. Big Sal only gives us a little hint to what his plan could be. And if I want to take over Vegas, then I gotta make sure that these people are all in the know for me. And after speaking to Troy and Clandon, it's pretty obvious that it's not, not beneficial to keep the Almeras around. I mean, if I want New Vegas to be a luscious place, I can't have people attacking it in the name of Caesar. So, unfortunately, even though I got Kachino ratted out, it's time to go take out the Button Man and take out Big Sal as well. Just to be safe, I take out Troik and Clandon as well. 
as I can't risk them potentially affecting Vegas negatively once I'm the big boss. Rumours of the White Glove have already reached me, and with a, a hint of cannibal- Who am I kidding? I just wanted to kill the White Gloves. I hate their quest, I hate trying to do it properly, I hate trying to do it negatively, I hate everything about it, I'm not even going to entertain it, I just want to walk in and start wiping out the White Gloves as soon as I can. Despite all that, in the middle of a huge gunfight, Heck Gunnarsson runs past and, yeah, beg your pardon, just opens up a, a very novel conversation. Same with Mortimer. I am wiping out white gloves by the dozens, and he finds it appropriate to ask if he can be of service. Yep, your brain can be all over the floor. And again, same with Marjorie. I've wiped out pretty much everyone in this hotel, but she still finds it finest to ask if I'd like a room. Um, I don't know if this is just a glitch with the white gloves. I mean, if you take out one Omerta, they all become hostile. So, taking out all the white gloves, pretty much none of them were hostile. I don't know, doesn't really make sense to me. So I decide, why not? I'll go grab Ted while I'm at it. I grab Ted to convince Heck not to wipe out the food supply of Vegas because you know I'm gonna wanna, I'm gonna wanna keep it for uh, for myself later. But hard to convince him after his son nearly got eaten. And with myself feeling that I kind of messed up that quest a little bit, I decided to go pick up the chainsaw. Which, a weapon that probably isn't used a lot in Scarface, but it's probably one of the most iconic ones. Now, Chainsaw and Business Suit for a playthrough is very reminiscent of the American Psycho video that I did on this channel, so I'm going to use the chainsaw very sparingly. That does not, however, save George, because if there's one person that I want to use this chainsaw for, it's old George. I don't know why I hate George. George ain't done nothing wrong ever. Except he does convince people to run into, you know, a missile field, so... Missile field? Is that what you would call it? Don't know what you'd call it. Despite having a big boomer in my pocket, the big boomers do not give me a free pass to run towards them. But I do survive and go speak to Pearl. Now, although Pearl's asking for my help, she just blew me up about a hundred times. So, I think there's only one way to take out... There's only one boomer allowed in this world and the big boomer that's in my pocket is the only one allowed to survive so time for the chainsaw and I want to try and make sure that uh, to to sh represent the the bathroom scene from Scarface to get Pearl in the bathroom with the chainsaw I mean I think if there was any side quest that had to be done that's it done I regret what I did next I headed in to get Argyle and no he's got a lead pipe that means I put the carbine and the next part I'm not proud of. Although I feel like Tony would do it, it's fitting for the character. Just... Something about it just didn't feel right. Only one last main guy to get, so I head over to the hangar to get Loyal. It's only Jack that's there, and Loyal for some reason is hiding in his house. They're always the other place that you look for them. And I decided to use some of the different shells for the big boomer. The dragon's breath is... I was not impressed. I didn't really enjoy much of the special ammo for the 12 gauge. I really found myself only enjoying the normal ammo. But with the boomers taken out, it's time to head over to the Brotherhood of Steel. I thought about what Tony would do with the Brotherhood. And all the kind of options didn't make sense except taking them out, which is what I used to do a lot in the, the earlier challenges, because it always made sense for the characters. And I feel like it'd be the same here. They're kind of like a rival gang. They're really powerful. They're quite dangerous. So yeah, I don't think Tony would leave them alive. I think he would listen to Yes Man and take them out. And despite me saying I wouldn't be using the chainsaw a lot, I mean, I really have went back on that, haven't I? But it does ignore the DT and uh, that the Brotherhood can be a real pain if you try to take them out, especially with weaker, weaker weapons. But now that I've got a bit of cover, I decided to head in with the Assault Carboyne bit of armor piercing and slowly take out the brother and let them kind of run at me instead of charging out because those those turrets are such a pain to get past I mean I think they're they're mark six right or mark five I mean I think it's quite close to the ones you find in the fortification hill bunker but for some reason those get destroyed very fast the ones down here in this bunker take forever to wipe out 
making my way deeper into the bunker it's becoming apparent that it's not going to be too difficult because the big boomer i don't know if it's got a special effect but even with the brotherhood's helmets on i mean when i'm hitting their uh, chest plates it's not doing much damage but the big boomer seems to be a one shot straight for the helmet as well and with the mcnamara dead head pardon dead just gotta go get Taggart and activate the self-destruct sequence. With the Brotherhood taken out, it's time to head over to Red Rock Canyon and meet the Cans. Now, the Cans have suffered many a different fate on this channel, mostly with them being wiped out slowly. But with Tony, I felt like there had there had to be a specific chain of events that I felt were the most fitting for the character. Now I'm already vilified by them for taking out Jessup who put a hit out on me. But that doesn't mean I can't fix that. So I speak to Regis, let him know that there's a plan to be put in place, and I turn Papa Can on the Legion. Now turning them on Carl isn't enough to get myself any sort of good graces. So I head straight over to Jack and Diane. Now, no matter what, by the end of this game, I gotta make sure I get Jack every new recipe that I possibly can. And that is that is a brickmaker promise. Now obviously this part of the, the Great Cans camp is the runners. And same as Jack, I've got to do all the quests for Diane as well. Something I cannot do while being vilified, so I'm going to have to do some loops and jumps to get around that. But despite all that, I've got to get them on my side right now. So the first place I'm going to head over is Cottonwood Cove. As I need to go speak to the poor Great Can that's been strapped up to a cross. It's here that we've learned that despite their allegiance with the Great Cairns, the Legion have been slapping them up onto crosses because of their chem running. With Anders free, I thought while I'm here, I might as well head over to the fort and speak to Caesar. Now, out of all the factions, I didn't think the Legion would be the worst option for Scarface. I didn't think he'd be the best. I probably, if I was to pick one that wasn't Yes Man, I'd have probably said House, then Caesar, then NCR. But despite that, I'm not going to be the same as Caesar. But that doesn't mean I can't, you know, rub his bald head and tell him he's a special boy. I do head into the bunker and plan to upgrade all of the robots while lying to Caesar. Because, you know, he's a bit of a gullible boy. Taking out the last couple of turrets here, I mean, much easier than the Brotherhood turrets, I upgrade all of the Securitrons and head back to Caesar. I mean, I tell him about the boomers, get some extra XP, see that he's uh, not doing so well and just head back to Red Rock because you know they don't like you know chem pushers and that's kind of my old thing so I'm just yeah that's that's the last time I'm going to see Caesar. My science got 50 after completing all of those quests I head back to Jack and decide to get some of his chems made and I started to really dislike his catchphrase grew delicious. What the fuck does that even mean? With that low, I tell Diane that, I mean, good news, that Anders is okay. I mean, he was being crucified, but she eventually gives me the quest to go see the man at the Crimson Caravan. I quickly run over and give Don his package. And it's here where we start meeting some of the bugs with the Great Cans. Now, I've been able to convince them to side with me in terms of the breaking their allegiance with the Legion. But I'm unable to turn in any more quests because of how poor my reputation is with the Legion. So I'm going to do something drastic to try and get that up. Now despite not wanting to side with any of the Legion, I do have quite a good rep with them. So I can go speak to Dead Sea and activate the quest We Are Legion so I can assault Camp Forlorn Hope. Now this mission here has a pretty big effect on the end of the Great Can story, but I actually thought it would up your reputation with them as well. It didn't. I didn't know it wouldn't. I thought it would. So all of this murdering here, taking out all of the different NCRs with the big boomer, wasn't a waste of time. I'd had to have done it anyway, but it didn't solve the initial problem I hope it would have solved. But anyway, I'll finish talking about that later. While I'm here, I've got to take out all the major people. <laughs> get it? Major? Major people? Major Pilate? Do you, do you get it? Finishing off the, the tech sergeant and the last of the NCR troopers in the tent. I tell the good news to Smelly P. I mean, you can tell by the expression on his face just how excited he is that I did that. 
And with that, I decided to do the last bit of the Great Khan's quest. I mean, I don't know why I've completed this quest so mixed up. I want to I wanna accuse it of Tony Montana probably being off his face on multiple different things. So his actions and thought process maybe be a little bit disjointed. But when heading over to Quad Junction to go speak to Melissa, yeah, I, I didn't feel like taking out all the death plus again like in the last video. So I stealth void through. And Melissa is the easiest to convince because, yeah, I think she's supposed to be... The difficulty is supposed to be getting to her, but a stealth boy makes it a hell of a lot easier. Papa Khan is shocked that his four trusted advisors have turned against the Legion, so it's my job to go pick up some, well, different things about their past. When heading over to see Ezekiel, I stop off at the 188 trading post to pick up some ammo, and it's here that I remember that I sold a bunch of Great Khan armor to Alexander. I pick up the history of the Khans, but it's here that I remember something from my Legion playthrough. If you put on a faction armor, it actually neutralizes your reputation with everyone. So with that, I'm no longer vilified. I can hand in my quest to Diane. Now, since I've put that armor on and got some fame, I can't take it off until I'm done. This whole section here, I have to finish everything while wearing this armor. And I've turned in myself to Papa Khan, and that gave me a lot of reputation as well and got me accepted. What I now can do is head over to Diane and she'll offer me another job to help out the Great Khans. This job involves heading over to Vault 3 to do a quick run for uh, Motor Runner. A run for the runner. Do you get it? It's very important that you get it. Running to his area. Again. Do. You. Get it. Carl Walker stands up and I'm able to pass him over all the different deliveries from Diane. And also I'm able to sell him some of my own personal stash which, again, I didn't know you could do and I don't think it gives you any reputation. I think it just gives you caps and XP which is, you know, quite nice. And when I head back to Diane, now remember I haven't took off the can armor. I'm able to hand in the run and... That gets me enough Great Can fame to make me liked. When you have completed the We Are Legion quest and took out Camp Fall on Hope and got yourself liked by the Great Cans, Papa Can will actually name you his heir. The heir to the Cans, which means when Papa Can passes away, I, Tony Montana, Scarface, will become the leader of the biggest chem peddlers in the whole Mojave. Despite what a great honour it is, there's only one thing that Tony Montana can do, and that is to get rid of the man in his way of taking over that huge faction of chem pushers. And with Papa Ken assassinated, Tony Montana is now the mob boss of the biggest gang in the whole Mojave. Well, are they the biggest gang? Probably not. But technically the NCR is probably the biggest gang. Speaking of the NCR, they fucking hate me, um, so they're never going to let me try and help protect Kimball. So I decide to head right over to the El Dorado gas station, I mean substation, I mean playstation. My place on Steam Deck. My assault on the substation sets off a chain reaction that they never saw coming. <coughs> um... Please don't leave. Please subscribe. Leave a like. I'm really trying, guys. I really am. Can't sleep while you're trespassing. That would be naughty, naughty. And I don't know if this is a glitch or a bug, but for some reason there's just great cans hanging outside the Vegas gates. Never, ever seen that before in my life. With that, I go to speak to Yes Man, getting a nice big chunk of XP, taking me to level 16, and getting me ready for the dam. But not quite yet, because there's one last thing i got to do. I gotta go speak to Jack, and I think my rep is back down again, but I have got myself to 75 survival, which means I can create the very last, it's not a chem, I think it's hydro, so not a chem, but still the final thing I can make, and now I can head to the dam. Now I might not have the boomers air support, but I do have big boomers um, hand support, yeah we'll leave that in. 
with that I head into the dam, installing Yes Man into the computers. I upgrade all the Securitrons underneath Fortification Hill as, well, I want them to wipe out the Legion for me. And while trying to take out this NCR soldier, I mean, that Securitron was playing some hell of a defense for them. So much so that I got distracted and fell through the bridge. I didn't know you could fall through that bridge. I've never fell through that bridge ever. There's a lot of firsts in this playthrough, but I've made it into the Legacy Gate and yeah. The big boomer vats headshots is a very, very dangerous combination. And I've been pretty much buying all the, buying? I've been pretty much getting all the shotgun perks anyway. So the big boomer is more or less my main weapon, which it re I feel like it shouldn't be for uh, for Scarface. So when it comes to the fight with the Leggett, uh, I want to introduce him to my, to my little friend. To my little, he's already running. I've already got him into yellow health. He's still running. I mean, he's running so fast I can't get him. I gotta put my weapon away. He's hiding in the corner. He's throwing grenades. He's fro he's gone. That must be the quickest. That must be the fastest and the easy. No wait. The Chinese spy I think was quicker because I got uh I had the anti-material rifle, but that's a close. That's a, that's maybe first, definitely second. In terms of a like, I talk about anticlimactic. I have had some of the longest fights. I mean, the fight with Geralt, level 35, I think I was by the end, what took longer than that. I mean, the assault carbine is some weapon to be able to do that amount of damage. I mean, it helps having every chem under the sun in my veins, and with chems being mentioned, I mean, there's only one last fight to go, so I might as well use them all. I mean, I can't get addicted, but uh, I smash in some Radex and put some Fixer on me anyway, just just to get as many chemicals as possible flowing through my veins. I mean, the fear that General Oliver has as I am literally tripping and hallucinating as he's talking to me, as these robots turn up, must be one of the most terrifying sights that I can imagine. I mean, the Legget died in 10 seconds. I am shaking as I see him. I am hallucinating, I am firing, and he's already gone. I think I even got a bunch of the NCR veterans. Usually the Securitrons take them out first, but I think I even get a few of them. Proving that yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas as Tony Montana from Scarface. This was a silly one. This was a real silly video. It was a lot of fun. I got to use a lot of weapons that I hadn't used, the Big Boomer, but... Most of them were kind of, you know, repeat weapons, assault carbines, 9mm pistols, you know, stuff of that chainsaw. But again, it was something that had been requested a lot by a very, very good fan, very loyal fan. And um, thank you so much for the suggestion. It was a fun video to make, very easy and casual playthrough for me. And I look forward to making another video. If you've got any suggestions, please leave them down below. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, share it with your friends. Show your mum these videos, show anyone, show your dog, make them an account, let them like. And I'll see you for another fun one. And one that I've nearly finished recording, but a good fun one. Something I'm also enjoying. Goodbye.